everyone, Ms. Pellegrino here. In this video, we are moving on from multiplication and getting into division. Today, we're going to focus on division with zeros. Let's get started. Before we go too far, I want to start us out with the problem of the day. This is a problem for you to go ahead and get warmed up and ready to do some math. Your problem of the day is a machine is selling stickers for 75 cents each. If you have $4, how many stickers can you buy? Will you have any money left over? Go ahead and pause the video while you work this problem. You can use a whiteboard, a piece of paper, whatever you have handy. Are you ready? Let's check our answer and see if you're correct. We know that the machine is selling stickers for 75 cents each. So each sticker costs 75 cents. We know that you have $4. And apparently you want to spend all of that money on stickers. They must be pretty cool stickers. So how many of these 75 cent stickers can we buy? And we have $4 to spend altogether. Well, let's think about this. We can start using repeated addition to figure out how many 75s go into four. So let's see, if we buy one sticker, we know that's only 75, so we can afford more than that. Let's say we buy two stickers. How much money have we spent? We've spent, oops, forgot my one, there we go. We've spent $1.50 on two stickers. Well, we have $4, so we still have more money to spend. So let's say I wanna buy another two stickers. So I spend another $1.50. Well, this means now I've spent $3 and I bought two four stickers. Well, we have $4 and I've only spent three so far. Well, let's buy another sticker. Here's my $3 and let's add another sticker to that. Oops, there we go. So we end up with $3.75. And I have bought one more sticker. So two over here, plus two here, plus one here. I've now bought five stickers and I've spent $3.75. I have $4, so I do have more money left over, but I don't have enough money left to get, an, to get a whole nother sticker. I've spent $3.75, so that must mean I have one quarter left from my original $4. The stickers are 75 cents, so we can't afford another one. So we've bought one, two, oops, I'm sorry, two, four, five stickers altogether. So we can buy five stickers and we did have money left over. We had 25 cents left. All right, now that we've got ourselves thinking about math and decimals and money and all that fun stuff, we can go ahead and get started with today's lesson. Today we're going to be focusing on problems that have zeros. So let's take a look at some division problems that have some zeros. We know that division is the inverse or opposite of multiplication. So we can rewrite a division problem this way as a multiplication problem. So whatever our answer is, times 7 equals 3,500. And when we look at the problem like this, we can figure out our answer using what we know about zeros in multiplication. We know that when we multiply with zeros, we want to look at the basic fact first. So let's just look at the basic fact. What times 7 gives me 35? Well, we know that 5 times 7 gives me 35. Now we know that there are one, two zeros on our final product. I see no zeros on either, or I'm sorry, I see no zeros on this 7, so I must need some zeros on this 5. There are two zeros here, and we know that however many zeros we have here, we have to have the same number of zeros over here. So if there are two zeros on this answer, we need two zeros on our first factor. 
So that must mean that 500 times 7 gives me 3,500. We can check that and make sure. If I multiply 500 by 7, do we get 3,500? We get 5 times 7 with 1, 2 zeros. Yes, we do. So our answer must be 500. Let's try the same thing on this second problem. Go ahead and pause the video and try it yourself. Can you use multiplication to figure out what is our missing number? Okay, let's try it. We know that we can rewrite this as multiplication. So something times five gives me 4,500. Just like before, let's start with our basic fact. Something times five gives me 45. Well, we know that nine times five gives us 45. So now we just have to look at our zeros. We can see that there are one, two zeros on our answer. So there must be two zeros on this side of our equal sign as well. I have no zeros on my five, so that means I need to put my zeros on my nine. So let's put two zeros. Let's check our work and see if we're correct. Is 900 times five really 4,500? Well, nine times five gives me 45, and one, two zeros gives me 4,500. Therefore, our answer must be 900. All right, so that wasn't so bad. All we did was use our multiplication knowledge and our knowledge of basic multiplication facts to solve these problems. Once we had our basic fact in place, we just had to count our zeros. Some of the problems you see will be a little bit trickier than that. This is a problem from your book. It says, a jet carries 18,000 passengers in 90 trips. The plane is full for each trip. How many passengers does the plane hold? We know that there are 18,000 passengers in all, and we know that it's taking 90 trips. So 18,000 passengers divided among 90 trips. And we want to know how many passengers were in each how many passengers were on each plane. Well, let's go ahead and solve this. This one's a little bit trickier because we have zeros on both of our uh, numbers here. But we can still use our knowledge of multiplication to solve it. So I'm going to rewrite this as a multiplication problem by basically writing it backwards. And saying something times 90 gives me 18,000. Just like with our last problems, we can start by looking at the basic fact. So let's not look at the zeros for now. Let's just look at something times 9 gives me 18. What times 9 gives us 18? Well, we know 2 times 9 will give us 18. So this first number must have some kind of 2. Now let's look at our zeros. There are one, two, three zeros on this product. So I know that I'm going to need three zeros on this side of my equal sign as well. Our zeros have to be balanced. I have one zero here, which means I still need two more zeros. So I'm going to put those extra two zeros on my two to come up with 200. We can check this and make sure 200 is our missing number by saying, is 200 times 90 really 18,000? Well, 2 times 9 is 18, and we have 1, 2, 3 zeros. We are good. So it takes 200 passengers, oh, I'm sorry, 200 passengers would have ridden on each trip. Now, at this point, you might be saying something like, Ms. Pellegrino, that's kind of a lot of work to write all of this out for every problem. Isn't there an easier way? Well, lucky for us, there is. Let's take a look at an easier way to solve this problem. We already know the answer is 200, so we already have something to work with. We know it's going to come out to 200 once we're finished. 
So let's look at this division problem one more time. Let me show you a quick shortcut. Instead of rewriting as multiplication, we can just look at this as division. Let's just look at our basic fact, 18 divided by 9. Again, I'm ignoring all of my zeros for now. 18 divided by 9, we've already talked about this. We know it's 2 because 2 times 9 gives us 18. Now let's look at our zeros. With division, it's a little different than multiplication. With multiplication, we want the numbers on each side of the equal sign, I'm sorry, the zeros on each side of the equal sign to be the same. We want them balanced. With division, we need to look at the division sign instead. So instead of looking at zeros on each side of the equal sign, we're going to look at the zeros on each side of our division sign. I have three zeros in my dividend. I need three zeros in my divisor and my quotient. I have one zero, so that means I need two more. One, two. And that's how we get our 200 without writing out all the multiplication. If looking at this as a multiplication problem makes more sense to you, feel free to write it out. But if you're looking to do these problems a little faster and more in your head, it's okay to just remember that on either side of your division sign, we want our zeros to be balanced. So three zeros on my first number or my dividend means I need three zeros on my last two numbers or my divisor and quotient. You try. Go ahead and try these problems here and see if you've got it. Go ahead and solve these on your own. Pause the video and work them out on a piece of paper or on a whiteboard. Try using your zeros tricks. All right, let's check these problems and see if you've got it. For these problems, we can use multiplication in order to solve. We know that this problem, 210 divided by 7, is the same as something times 7 equals 210. Let's use, our let's use our knowledge of basic facts and say something times 7 gives us 21. We know that three sevens make 21. We have one zero on our product, which means we need one zero on this side of the equal sign as well. Right now I have no zeros, so I need to put one on my missing number. So I end up with 30 times 7 gives me 210, or 210 divided by 7 gives me 30. For this next problem, let's just do it with the division fact. 32 divided by 4 is what? Well, we know that it's 8. I'm going to look at either side of my division sign to figure out my zeros. I have one zero here, which means I'm going to need one zero on this side as well. There are no zeros on that four, so let's go ahead and put a zero on my eight. So 320 divided by four must be 80. Down here, we have similar problems, except we have zeros on our divisors. So let's see how that would change the problem. We can do this first one as multiplication by saying something times 70 gives us 210. We can solve this using our knowledge of multiplication facts. As we talked about up top, we know that 3 times 7 gives us 21. So based on the basic fact, we know we need a 3. Now let's look at our zeros. On this side of the equal sign, we have one zero. So that must mean that we need one zero on this side of the equal sign as well. I already have a zero in 70, so I already have my one zero. That means I don't need any more zeros. My answer is just three. We can do the same thing on this problem over here. 3,200 divided by 40 Let's solve this using our division. 
So instead of rewriting this as multiplication, I'm just going to look at the basic fact, 32 divided by 4, ignoring my zeros to start out with. I know that 32 divided by 4 is 8, and now I need to look at my zeros. Remember that when looking at division, we'll want to look at either sign of the division sign. We have 1, 2 zeros on this side, so that means we need 2 zeros on this side as well. I have 1 zero on my 40, so I need one more zero. So I'm going to go ahead and put a zero on my 8 to get 80. We can check this problem and make sure we got it by doing 80 times 40 and seeing if it gets us 3,200. 8 times 4 is 32 plus 1, 2 zeros. We're good. So the answers to both of these problems are 80. These are the types of problems you'll see on your assignment for today. Now, quick word of warning, you might see some problems that are similar, but throw a little curveball in what we've been doing. These problems are just a little bit more challenging. Let's try a couple of the challenge type problems that you might see on your assignment for today. Go ahead and pause this video and try to work these two problems out. What answer do you come up with? All right, let's check these. Did you see what I meant about these being a little more challenging? Let's go over them together. On this first problem, it looks simple enough. We have a basic fact, we have some zeros. But when I go to rewrite this as multiplication, something times 50 gives me 3,000. I'm running into a bit of a problem here. If I try to look at just the basic fact, something times 5 gives me 3, well, that doesn't work. I can't multiply anything by 5 to get 3. If this happens, you need to take that first zero into account. So now I'm going to look at it as 30 instead. So what times 5 gives me 30? Well, we know that 6 times 5 gives us 30. Now we need to look at our leftover zeros. We already looked at this one. So now we just need to look at the zeros that are left over. We had 1, 2. That means there must be 2 zeros on this side of the equal sign because we already use this first one as part of our product. So there's already one zero, so there must be one more zero to give me those two. And let's check this together and make sure we've got it. 60 times 50 gives us what? 6 times 5 gives us 30. Oh, there's our extra zero. And we need one, two more zeros on that answer. We get 3,000, so 60 must be the correct number. This other type of problem gives you a missing number in the middle of your division sentence. Now we can rewrite this as multiplication by going 700 times something gives me 4,200. And when we do it this way, we see that it's the same type of problem as the other ones we've been solving, where we're solving for a missing number in our multiplication sentence. They've just tried to throw us off by putting the blank in the middle instead. So let's go ahead and solve this one. Taking a look at our basic fact first, 7 times what gives us 42? Well, 7 times 6 gives us 42. So I know my answer must have some kind of a 6 in there. Now let's check our zeros. On this side of the equal sign, we have 1, 2 zeros. So that must mean we need 2 zeros on this side as well. I see that I already have 1, 2 zeros on my 700, so I don't need any more. My answer is just 6. And we can check this by asking ourselves, is 700 times 6? Really, 4,200? 7 times 6 is 42 with two more zeros. Yes, it is, so we know our answer is correct. The missing number must be a 
6. Your assignment for today is going to have problems just like the ones we just solved. Some of the challenge problems and some of the regular problems we looked at at the beginning. You're going to be in your math book on page 183, solve problems 15 through 25, and that is it. We'll discuss these problems in our next Google Meet. Goodbye till then.